Hi, very good afternoon to you. It's Jim from Avstar Observatory. Guys, I'll keep it short and sweet. And there isn't really much to say other than, you know, the reason why we're looking at this data is because we took the time out to build, if not buy, the equipment so that we could relay this information to you. The reason why you know there is 332 part, 432 parts per million atmospheric CO2 is because we've got the equipment to measure it. Likewise, oxygen. We've got the Luminox sensor. You know, this was something I had to buy and program a breakout board to read the information from the sensor so that you could get that information first hand. You don't have to rely on these mainstream organisations. You know, we're doing it here for you. You know, the longitude and latitude of the latest position of the magnetic north pole, which we'll be doing tomorrow, by the way, is only available to us because we've got a TriMag system. This is one piece of a kit that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. It is bespoke, one-off, and we've got one here. You know, some of the information we can get from other websites that we trust, like the amount of volcanoes in eruption, you know, the latest, um, largest earthquake measuring 5.2. As you can see, you know, we've got muon detectors in the UK, Australia and Canada. And you get the data off those when and they come. When that information comes, we relay it back to you. You can see that our sun is a little bit more active than it has been for a long, long time. Five sunspots. Which is good. Because that means that our heliosphere gets that little bit more inflation. Let's hope it continues that way. Guys. You know, our world is in a catastrophic state right now. And, you know, we all eat our bacon sandwiches tomorrow, so it's all hunky-dory. Everything is normal, but it completely isn't. It's falling apart at the seams. If you was an inspector at the seams, you would know that there was alarm bells needed to be rang right now. And they do. I want to bring to your attention the fact that as we speak right now our water tables globally are shifting. They are shifting. And this has not been uncommon to our species before. The only difference is is that we are rooted in cities, towns, and countries whilst it takes place things that cannot be easily picked up today and moved tomorrow think about that if you don't believe me ask why in google searches the egyptians empire collapsed was it because the nile failed to uh, you know overflow and replenish that, that land with water every year as it did and then it suddenly stopped was it the reason why the Mayans abandoned their pyramids and their cities like they did almost as if it was you know they were going to return you know their pots and pans was left in the houses that they'd built it was as though they were going short term but never come back we're back here right now facing the very very same times and nobody's paying any attention to it nobody's nobody even cares how come a mortgage how come some bills how come some credit card debts be more important right now than the fact that the water tables are shifting right before our very eyes our cities, our towns are going to be desolate. Not far from now. I ain't trying to frighten you. I'm trying to give you a heads up. Water is going to become the liquid gold of the future. Mark 
these words because it's going to happen oh I know what lots of people are thinking oh we can get desalination up and running overnight yeah try it try it let's see how well your governments cope with that just isn't going to happen you know what I come across today some information which I found very canny I found it very canny because you know it relates to the same quantity as carbon that is emitted into the atmosphere through all resources that's land oceans and man's minute contribution guess what I found out today that it corresponds accurately to the amount of fresh water on our planet can you believe that there is the same amount of fresh water on our planet as there is CO2 in our atmosphere and it is a minuscule amount and there isn't much fresh water on this planet that you can dip your cup in and put it straight to your lips without some form of purification, sterilisation, etc. We are looking at it, guys. Uh, don't kid me. We are definitely looking at it. The disaster about to happen. It's going to happen full scale. And I wish I had the enthusiasm like some of my colleagues on YouTube when they say we won't resort to things like cannibalism we just won't because we will we just will let me tell you something when you're faced with starvation you'll resort to cannibalism you won't be the first person to do it you know back in 1942 during the blockade of Stargate Stalingrad sorry people were being arrested left right and centre for cannibalism because there was nothing else to eat and if there's nothing else to eat then there's only human beings and guess what it can keep you alive the problem is with most people is they, they look in the mirror and they don't realise what species they are they see the two eyes in front of them and yes some of them may realize that they're predators but some of them may not realize their true capabilities of what they will do when desperation times hit hard if you've not ate for two weeks you might be looking at your neighbor thinking a few things or two if you're a mother with children and your kids have a net for two weeks you're definitely going to be thinking a thing or two these are really dark times that we're all living in right now I want you to know that and I don't want you to be frightened I don't want you to be delusional I want you to understand exactly what is going on around us because the cutthroat business is getting closer to home it's almost at our doors trust me it's almost there No need to ask for support. Those that want to know where the links are, I'll say what I usually do. As always, bye for now.